more video game toys. Today we got NECA Batman vs. NECA Booker. We were talking about the latest uh, collectibles from Gecko Corporation and we got Nendoroid Pokemon Trainer. Oh yeah, so uh, we got five pieces of awesome news to get in first. To get into first, you know. That okay. Uh, so first up, we're going to be talking about Figma Snake, which is now available for pre-order. Jesse, you mentioned that you're totally into this. Yeah, I'm really into this, and I'm more into this because the next couple figures that they're going to show are the soldiers. So we're going to have generic Russian military soldiers that Snake can apply his uh, QCQ against. Figma? In Figma. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. So yeah. if you are interested in having an awesome, highly articulated uh, Snake by Figma, you can pre-order it down below with the link in the description. Yeah, Big Bad uh, Toy Store. Yeah, what's really awesome is that if you pre-ordered it from Good Smile, which is, you know, Japanese only, he comes with a little the box, box, a cardboard yeah. box that you can hide in, That's which is really, really cool. I, don't, I want that box. Like, I wonder how many people are going to pre-order from Good Smile and then put it up on eBay. The box. I want, like, little accessories, like, notifications, that, like, you know, for these, like, Russian military troopers, like, huh? What is that? With the yeah. exclamation point? Oh, yeah. He doesn't yeah. come with that, huh? The, uh, the Revolt Tech did have those clear little exclamation points. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's entirely feasible. Maybe we will get something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're going to pick it up, pre-order it in the link below at Big Bad Toy Store. Pre-order link in the link below? Let's pre-order link in the link below, yes. Um, uh, next up, we have NECA Android Bishop uh, from James Cameron's Aliens. Uh, pretty cool if you're an Aliens fans. We've done lots of Alien stuff here on the show. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to buy it, but I can't buy this without buying the deluxe Hive Queen set that they have, yeah. which wow. is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, I The only problem is I just need to knock down a wall in my apartment and build another room because these things are enormous. You just need a whole room dedicated to aliens, and then one day you'll be able to have that spacesuit. Exactly. The Nostromo, uh, well, it's not, is it Nostromo? No. Well, yes. Well, talking no. about the Nos no. Nostromo, Nostromo, or Nostromo, uh, they're also, the Bishop's going to be releasing with, uh, Kane in his, uh, in his, in his uh, uh, spacesuit. Yes. Space suit, yeah. yeah. The, uh, Mobius designed one that's very popular. Okay, news item number three, cartoon hangover news, actually. Wheel of Fine has a Wallace plush, which is now available for pre-order. That is right, and if you guys haven't seen it yet, Bean Puppy Cat the series has now been launched. Episodes 1 and 2 are out, and Wallace is the famous character from the short uh, in Fishbowl Space. He's crying, he talks, it's such a great uh, plush, and uh, of course you can expect Wheel of Fine jumped on Wallace, so. It looks good enough to eat. It's pretty cool because it plays the entire Puppy Cat song. Yeah. Which yeah. is really long, actually. <laughs> Just the vocals, and you know, he says classic lines like, I miss my mama. Can I have a story? I, I miss mean, my mama. I miss, I miss my, my mama. mama. <laughs> and I miss my mama. It becomes yeah. a controversial toy. You keep yeah. pressing it really yeah. fast. Yeah. Uh, so in addition to being Puppy Cat, there's also going to be some Bravest Warriors merch. That's right. Uh, Funko have shown us, and this is a world premiere for Toy Pizza. That's right. The painted pop vinyl prototype. This thing looks gorgeous. No, it's so beautiful. Check it out. It's Catbug, and this is straight from Funko. And you know, be sure to you know, copy this image, share it across social media with the hashtags Bravest Warriors and Toy Pizza and Funko, and get excited for this Catbug pop Let's vinyl. make this Mimi go viral. Mimomo! I mean, it's also going to be on our Tumblr, so... And again, this isn't the first uh, image. I mean, this isn't the only Bravest Warriors uh, Funko pop that's going to come out. They're working on a, an Impossible Bear. That's, that's right. right. With the gas-powered stick. Yes. Which is so cool. So, I mean, that's that. Uh, do we have... I guess we're done with news, right? No, we have one more thing. One more. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, speaking of We Love Fine, uh, they are our fantastic partners in the upcoming... Night of the Slice. Night of the Slice yeah. Kickstarter, Kickstarter, which we are officially calling... Mm -hmm. Pizza Quest. Pizza Quest. Oh, okay. Knights of cool. the Slice. So the three of us, we are true Knights of the Slice, but we got to say that, you know, all the fans out there, you guys are Knights of the Slice, and you guys definitely showed us so much support, you know, for this project, and we definitely want to bring these action figures to life, not just for us, but for you guys. That's right. Uh, you know, this is arguably a action figure that is tailor-made after our audience. This, yeah. this uh, you know, if you are a supporter of the show, and you want to have an action figure of you, this is the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to be working out the details and expect to see us on Kickstarter very soon, but, you know, of course there's going to be, you know, certain stretch goals, and of course, tons of exclusives, so we'll definitely uh, keep you updated and uh, as those come out. Yeah, there's going to be some great collaborations. We're going to have some awesome artist editions. It's going to be some incredible paint variants, some, like you said, super awesome accessories, so just tune in here, follow us on Instagram and on Tumblr, 
And as soon as we have all the details locked in, you guys will be the first to know. So the topic of the week is more video game toys. So now we bring to you two brand new NECA figures, and what if we pitted them against each other? Well, we're going to have to. You know, NECA has released two amazing figures around the same time, so we're going to put it to the audience who wins in this plastic battle. Is it Batman or Booker? So yeah, you know Batman, you know and love him, but look, he is purple because, I mean, Jesse, you can keep bringing on toys in this Nintendo-style colorway. I know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Boy, I'm just obsessed. I'm, I'm sick of these. I, you know. Um, this is the only uh, NECA recolor that I'm actually into. Oh, really? Because you know? I'm not a huge horror fan, mm -hmm. um, but I am a huge Batman fan. I am a huge Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman sure. fan. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, by doing the sort of exclusive colorway... NECA have been able to uh, do an action figure that arguably would have been too competitive to Mattel's license. Yeah. Actually, uh, Tim Keaton, Tim Keaton, uh, <laughs> Michael Keaton actually, right Michael Keaton? Yeah. It sounds weird now that I said Tim Keaton, uh, said he would not do Batman again unless Tim Burton was involved. Yeah. Which that would funny. be amazing if there was a, you know, Batman at 60 with a yeah. starring uh, yeah. no, I'd, I'd be Tim Keaton I, I saw Tim, that. and Michael <laughs> I, Burton. I'd watch it. I, I still have to see Birdman with Michael Keaton. Yeah. I'm sure it's awesome. It's getting tons of great reviews. Wait, by the time this airs, you already did see I Birdman. I did see it. I mean, oh, I love that, it was good. that movie. It was so great it was how he did comedy, that though. thing. How did you like it, um, Interstellar? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It was really, really good. Because by the time this airs, you You've have already seen, seen it. We're seeing Interstellar tonight, so now you know that we film a little in advance. But, so check this out. Again, Batman and NECA. Uh, the, when NECA does this Nintendo Retro, they gotta, you know, make the box art just as nice. And it looks they, like a VHS box. Well, an NES box, right? Yeah. Oh, well, no, I mean, I guess. I also it's a little bigger than the NES was, but this is how yeah. the, the original box looked, more or less. And on the insert, you know, they have the background and then the inside, and also, like, a nice screenshot. And this one's really cool, because it's Batman confronting the Joker. It'd be cool if they did a Joker version of this. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure by, um, by the time this airs that people will have... Uh, acquired this figure and repainted him in all black. You know, the the customizers out there are probably foaming at the mouth to get their hands on this and, really? why, and make why? it more screen accurate. Because NECA doesn't have a Batman. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Well, what's great about this is that if you've played the Batman game, let's be honest, it's a great game. I awesome mean, the controls game. are clunky. You're, like, mm -hmm. jumping off walls. Mm -hmm. The music is so sick. The intro is awesome. But honestly, when they did the sequel to this game, which is, uh, I forgot the name. It's Joker. I think it's Revenge of the Joker. Revenge maybe? of the Joker. I'm Something not sure. Like but he actually, in that game, he's a little bigger, the game sprite, and he actually resembles the colorway even closer mm. than the original Batman game. Yeah. You're, you're seeing a picture of it right now. The, the second game is actually closer to Contra than it is, mm. wherein, uh, you know, the first game was kind of like Ninja Gaiden. Yes, definitely. With his uh, jumping ability. And the, um, the throwing of the mm -hmm. stars. Ninja but, stars. Uh, <laughs> I, I, love, uh, I love both those titles. I remember just, um, you know, that was really one of the first licensed games that I played. And to go see the movie in the theater and then play with the action figures and then be able to re-experience it in, on the Nintendo, it was, um, you know, it was a really immersive sort of thing. Um, you know, it's weird because, uh, he comes with, uh, the Batarang and, uh, what is it, Grapple Gun? But the Grapple mm -hmm. Gun doesn't stay to his belt, right? No, but it does fit um, nicely in his hand. They, they've done good. a good job of, uh, including hands that really grip the accessories. Yeah, that's a sure. pet peeve of mine. If you have accessories that just don't, don't fit in the hands, what's the point? Shoot. Well, you know, J uh, Nikki, you should totally buy this. That way you can have the Jason, you can have the Predator, you can have the Batman. You can have a shelf dedicated to purple toys. I mean, yeah, I know the Freddy's not purple, but, you know, this Batman is... the Jason. I know, well, the Jason, yes, and the Predator, but, and I also have a Robocop, too, but. Robocop, right. He's so sick, and I know you had mentioned that, like, the Predator's more detailed, but I kind of like, you know, the, the paint that they provided because it almost gives them more of a comic book feel. Yeah. And definitely the purple cloth cape is just taking me back to, uh. Stealing the, uh, cape from your, your kindergarten's toy chest? I think we've Fun. mentioned that story at least four times on this show. Hey, we get new vi uh, viewers every day, so they the have statu to know. The statue of limitations. Uh, limitations has run out on that, so I think you're safe. Okay. You won't be persecuted. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you won't be persecuted. Unless my uh, kindergarten teacher is watching. So yeah, we got this one, Batman Nintendo style by NECA. So if you pitted him against the next guy, what do you think? Booker D. Witt from Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, no, um, you love this game. Now look, most people are going to say Batman wins, and Batman wins every time. Uh, Batman does win in this case, for me. I think that uh, in in this, um, what was that show where they would pick Genghis Khan versus... Celebrity Deathmatch? No, not Celebrity Deathmatch. Celebrity um, Deathmatch. 
And he'd be like, the Punjabi sticks have what? infected the wound with feces. Uh, I have no idea not, what you're yeah, talking about. Talking Ultimate about. Warrior. I have oh, no God. idea what you're talking it's about. It's on Spike. Oh, and I they pit ancient that. warriors against each other, like Vlad the Impaler versus Rasputin. No. And they, like, scientifically rate their weapons and stuff. Oh, if that's you cool. know what we're talking about, leave it in the comments, because uh, I have no idea what that is. It'll come to me momentarily. But anyway, okay. if we're pitting these two together, I think Booker would actually win by a fluke. If Why? the battle takes place in... Gotham? Um, no, not in Gotham, in um, Columbia. Okay. okay. Right? Because... I don't think Batman is familiar with the skyhooks. Mm -hmm. He may try to shoot the skyhooks with his grapple gun, mm -hmm. and that may electrocute him. And that could give Booker the opening that he needs in order to take out. That's a good the breakdown analysis. All right. Now speaking just uh, about the toy and uh, NECA, this is the second um, Bioshock toy that they've done. No, they've done a few. They okay. have uh, the Boys of Silence. They have like a patriot, the patriot. Um, Washington Patriot. The female lead whose name escapes me at the moment. Oh, what is her name? So, Booker! It's something... <laughs> Annabelle? No, yeah. that's a scary movie. Um, <laughs> Del Toro? No! Oh, God, what is it? Um, yeah, oh, boy. Well, there's literally no Elizabeth. way to find out. Elizabeth, yes. That's it, right? Um, Elizabeth. They right? Then they did the two I'm guessing so. mechanized patriots. George they Washington, did. Benjamin Franklin. Right, and now finally we get Booker. Yes. Yeah. It's best for last, I guess, for you. For sure. Um, November Black Glove... Did not fund, but I have the feeling those guys are going to make their next plans uh, known to people very shortly. Mm. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the creators and uh, t team behind Bioshock Infinite uh, try to do a Kickstarter called Black Glove, but they are working on new things. So we got Batman versus Matt Bollinger. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really look like him. Well, it's good. It kind of does look like him, but it's, what's the AD on his hand? I'm not familiar. Oh, that's a big spoiler. I can't tell you. Oh, okay. really? Now talking about the toy, do you think uh, this figure does justice to? Um, Booker DeWitt? Yeah, look, it's an amazing toy. Uh, it has the right amount of articulation. It's got the right amount of posability, but it doesn't compromise the sculpt, and all of the joints are well hidden. So I love it. Um, if you look closely, you can see the seam of the hair is actually a separate piece oh, that wow. connects to the head, and that gives it a lot, of, a lot more definition. Um, my only complaint about this action figure is that I wish I had it a year ago. When I was sort of first playing Bioshock and getting introduced to the world. Yeah. Now, with you saying that, now, you don't mind that you waited, like, 20 years for this? I'm also, <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> well, evergreen. You know, a nine-year-old me would have gone just insane for this action yep. figure. It's amazing. And you can even kind of pull the cowl up a little bit and just see... Just a tiny bit, right? See that Michael Keaton's face is really rendered beautifully under there. His yeah. his jaw is just like... You can it's, tell that's yeah, Michael Keaton. The jaw. Yeah. My favorite thing about the uh, Booker figure is the, the way you can do a double take. What? Well, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I would definitely love his accessories, you know. Uh, can you tell us a little more about that gun? No, it's a spoiler. It's a skyhook. So that's a skyhook? Yeah, dingus? Yeah. No, they actually made a skyhook, like, you know, replica, yeah. right? Yeah, Mecca also yeah. made yeah. a life-size one. Yeah. Um, the skyhook is your main mode of transportation. It, you know, in um, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum and, and those games by Rocksteady, you kind of travel by grapple hook. Yeah. Well, Booker's iteration of that is the skyhook, which connects to all these different rails that get you around Columbia. Or uh, like uh, 3D Maneuver Gear. Yeah, just sure. like that. A attack on Skyhook. So definitely let us know in the comments who do you think would win, Batman or Booker DeWitt. So who are you? Who do you pick? I mean, you made a great point about you know the the equipment, but if it wasn't Gotham, you know, the, it would be Batman because the Batmobile. And, he has and, buildings, you know, and he can Batman hide in the night. Can hop sure. in yeah, and he can, or just hit him with the Batmobile car, yeah, you know. Car run over. Okay, you're picking Batman as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually picked Batman as well, but I thought, <laughs> you no, know, no, I love the scenario for, you had planned out. For there. contrast' sake, one of us had to make an argument in Booker's favor. Well, it was and a I, good scenario, and I will say, I think you know, traditionally Batman comes up against thugs who really don't have the will to sort of do what's necessary to win a fight. Booker doesn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a you know, he will pull the trigger, you know, regardless. He will not give Batman the opportunity to outsmart him or get close and use close quarters combat. You know, hey. Booker will absolutely shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking not about equipment, not about, you know, setting, and we're only talking about, you know, finances, I think Batman would win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good point. But also if we're talking about various disciplines of martial arts, Batman, Batman would, would probably yeah, okay, win. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And okay. style, right? Yeah. Batman would probably win. Yep. Batman would 
Um, but, you know, Booker does have a sort of, he's lived a hard life. He's very, mm-hmm. he's kind of like Rocky. He could right. take a thousand punches and still be too dumb to quit. Right. You know? yeah. Yeah. And I don't think Batman's used to that. I think he's I used know. to having the the uh, intimidation edge. So you yeah. think if it was a contest of whoever had the like harder life growing up, who, Batman would probably win. Who had the will to survive? Batman would yeah, win. Yeah, if yeah, your yeah. parents died, okay. uh, Batman, Batman would, would probably win. Right. Yeah. But if you're going based off of street smarts, yeah, Batman, Batman would, would win. win. <laughs> um, but then if you're thinking about like who has the most steampunkish costume, Batman, Batman would, would win. win. <laughs> and, For uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, Batman. Uh, now also let us know in the comments, if Batman was this colorway... Do you think he would be just as cool, just as awesome? I think he's more awesome for this. This is like, yeah. this is actually Prince's version of Batman. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like if Batman looked like that, it's really, really cool. So those are the two latest naked figures that we got: uh, Batman from Nintendo colorway and Booker mm-hmm. DeWitt. Nintendo. What if Bioshock NECA? What if Bioshock was a comic? Do you think Batman would probably win that? Um, if they were both comic, comic books and selling on newsstand, Batman, Batman would, would win. win. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just sense. want to keep doing the Batman would win joke. It's Batman funny. But <laughs> well, we could use that in the future. Maybe on a t-shirt. Hashtag <laughs> Batman would win. Yeah. So many, like, maybe on a t-shirt. Yeah. Maybe on a t-shirt. So speaking of Nintendo. Speaking of Nintendo. Silent Hill toys. <laughs> okay. So you know, Nintendo, we have this very price, pricey. Whoa! Very pricey, very, very pricey, very spicy. Well, Nindoroid. Okay, so a lot of people out there are like, oh, how do I get this figure? You saw our unboxing, you guys loved it. Mm-hmm. And this figure, not only is it a Japanese import, but it wasn't sold in stores except for the Pokemon Center. Mm-hmm. In Japan. In Japan. So here we have uh, Pokemon Red, uh, Trainer Red. Trainer Red from uh, the Pokemon series. Hey, I know these Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, what do we got? I'll name them. There's three. They're the Squirtle, original starters. Squirtle's easy. Okay. Charmander. Uh-huh. Okay. Easy. Uh, Bulbasaur. Nice. Very good. Yeah, we got yeah. it. Hey, done. Pokemon still relevant. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> you do, fellow kids. Now this is one of your favorite purchases of all time. It is, but I still wish it wasn't so much money. Funny story is uh, we picked it up uh, at Image Anime, and he's like, "I gotta get this toy." He, uh, you know, puts it on the counter. He gives him his card, and he says, "Please sign here." And he goes, he does the double take like this. Yeah, yeah like, he does the Booker double take. Yeah. How much what? was this? And then Nikki was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna buy it." And I'm like, "Nikki, it's and he yeah. bought it anyway." So after you know, I ignored uh, his receipt. I gave him my credit card, right. and then I got my receipt. But I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> but uh, uh, it was two hundred and fifty-six dollars. Yes. No, well, it wasn't. Possibly. Well, total for the both of them, yeah. Maybe. No. Um, so basically, you know, if you have an Android figure, you know how things go. You got, you yep. know, these chibi, like, large enhanced heads. But mm-hmm. this figure comes with three alternate expressions. Yep. Tons of arms because he has to hold a Pokeball and tons a Master arms. Ball. Yep. Backpack, the three starters, Pokedex arm. And, uh, you know, he's a great figure. He's Hand awesome. in the pocket? Hand in the pocket. Super cool. Yeah. The reason why we're covering him... In this episode for Video Game Toys is because we will have a Smash-oriented episode, and unfortunately Pokemon Red, uh, is, Pokemon Trainer didn't make not the cut. In the, maybe DLC, but doubtful. Yeah. Well, thanks for reviewing that figure, Nikki. Let's go ahead and move on to Silent Hill Toys. No, talk about it more. You love this toy. Well, it also comes with uh, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. I like that it's sort of like a matte paint to it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like yeah. a shiny gloss. Right. It's uh, really cool. kind of cartoony. Yeah. And uh, what's cool is the Pikachu. We had uh, Ash Ketchum figure um, in, in one of our Pokemon episodes, which you can check out. From Tomy. From Tomy, yeah. And um, that Pikachu is pretty much two scale, so it works out. Yeah. Very cheapy. He's very top heavy. I know, but isn't that with like a lot of Android figures, though? Yeah. Like they just can't stand on their own very well. So I just have him leaning against my computer uh, desktop. Makes sense. Yeah. TB. So yeah, also he comes on the backpack too, which is really cool. So I think that's an identifying characteristic of uh, Pokemon trainers. I would definitely love to see a female version of this. And give me cool. a Team Rocket, you know? And how about some Digimon characters? Well, they could do the Digimon, uh, sure. I don't know what Digimon is. I think uh, they have a Figma Nindor... No, sorry, Figma Nindoroid. Uh, Nindoroid uh, Snake. Yeah, snake yeah. Figma. We saw that at Comic-Con, and you are excited about that. Um, I... I don't need more lines to collect, so you I'm going to pass. You do, though. What is three and three quarter inch? What about Nintendo Roy Batman that comes with the uh, bat signal? Nah, I don't. Okay. Look, I'm it's three interested. inches. What do you want? Yeah, three it's inches. This, it's exactly what you're looking for. It's the wrong proportions, <laughs> my friend. Uh, also, one detail that I really like about this figure uh, figure is that he comes with, uh, you know, various arm accessories, but he has one that makes it look like his hand is in his pocket. Mm-hmm. Pokemon like Trainer thing. Red, check out our unboxing video, and yeah. you're, you just saw tons of B-roll of it, but... It's pretty sweet. Yeah, he's awesome. So moving on to our final uh, video game, you know, collectibles, we have 
two statues. I think we from... already covered horror toys. I can't believe we're doing these. I know, but they're so detailed and these so are, cool. These are amazing. So these Very are from spooky. Gecko Corporation, who uh, were founded in 2011, and they're starting to make a bigger push here in the U.S. They have Silent Hill. These are from Silent Hill 3. Mm -hmm. This guy is terrifying. I can't right? look at him in the face, so I'm just going to have him facing the camera the whole time. It's well, amazing. He's great. He reminds me of Bear Bricks, but obviously he's a lot scarier. Uh, the thing that is so creepy about him because he's bloodied up and he's this weird mascot, he reminds me of The Shining almost. You yeah. Know, the, the, yes, when he goes through the door and he's like, uh, I saw something I shouldn't see. <laughs> But, you know, if you have played the Silent Hill series, not only is it very, very scary, but this guy, you know, premiered in Silent Hill 3, made his way through more games, and he's just there. He's just there in the background in different colors. He's pink, and he's just laying on benches, and you just don't know. Is it a person inside? But he doesn't do anything? Is it a demon? I don't know. No, I he mean, just um, sits there? There's toys well, of him, figures. And part, part 3 is the best one because they're stuck in the amusement park, which is yeah. such a creepy premise, you know, if Wait, you think about it. his first appearance is in the third one, or yeah. is he in all of them? No, from 3 on, he makes appearance yeah. like uh, as a doll okay. and like as a mascot. It's gotcha. a running gag. Yeah, I got you. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, don't play Silent Hill 3, uh, or Silent Hill. Or us. Yeah. But he's the, not a villain. He just sits there. He just, he adds to the, uh, the, the, the ambiance. Right, yeah. right, right. But I'm saying he doesn't, like, come chasing you, attacking you. No, like, no, he, none of us have played the game. Uh, he's played, oh, well, he is, I didn't know. He's played, okay, well, cut that out. I, I didn't know. Oh, no, I'm cutting know. I didn't know you No, you leave it all in. Oh. You leave it all in, warts and all. <laughs> all right, so... What's really funny about this character, he is playable in uh, Crazy <laughs> Tune Racing for the uh, uh, the mobile phone game, which is weird. Is he really? Yeah. You know, I I have a rule, like I was saying with the Nendoroids, I only collect certain lines and I don't need to collect other stuff. And statues is something I've stayed away from because, you know, they take up a lot of space and you got to yeah, save the do. boxes for it. These This product is making me reconsider that because it's so well done. Like, yeah. look at the detail you know, her eyes are a separate molded piece. She has freckles very subtly painted onto her. She comes with a lightsaber. piece. She does come with a beam sword that switches out. The leopard print. This is just amazing. And I think that I will be making my first statue purchases from Gecko wow. when they do Metal Gear. Because oh, uh, of course. Now up for pre-order is the Raiden <laughs> and the Snake. That's awesome. And uh, those will be coming out in 2015, and they are gorgeous. Listen, you need a, a Metal Gear room, and then you need an Aliens room. I do. That's true. Yeah, so also, if you guys haven't played Silent Hill, uh, Silent Hill 3 is actually one of the uh, games that inspired the movie Silent Hill Revelations. What's your favorite part of Silent Hill? Yeah, Hill tell us a little bit more about oh, the Silent Hill. My favorite part. Yeah, yeah. The really scary poopy part. Oh, no, wait, no. oh which one? Which no stage. Well, yeah, which I, stage? I don't think it goes in stages, but no. I, honestly, I. Which what stage? about that title screen? Yeah, the title right. screen is so good. Right. Like, what's scary. your favorite part about it? Yeah. Yeah. I had to either save load game or press start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. real, yeah. real creepy. Tell us a little press bit more. X to yeah. begin. No, um, what's it called? This character right here, Heather, is actually the daughter of the main character in the first one. And I played the first one, mm -hmm. and that's why I, did, I stayed away from the second one, because mm -hmm. it wasn't a direct sequel. So this one is a closer sequel to one, and it's just, like, what is Silent Hill? Like, what is it? I, I would know. love to know. <laughs> you would, too. I Creep thought it was a zombie game, but I guess not. Well, the thing, the, the controls were a little clunky, but I, I follow Resident Evil more than Silent Hill. Like, because right. Silent Hill was too scary, you know? Yeah, I'm, you know, I don't... I can't play even Dead Space. Like, I get right. too spooked, and I Are you just serious? can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Another great reason we should be paying attention to Gecko is because they're not only doing Naruto, but also Berserk, which is my all-time favorite manga. Not anime, but manga. Mm. Um, what's it called? Josh, um, who what's, runs our Tumblr. Uh, Toy Pizza. Uh, Tumblr. He's a robot. What's no, he called? loves Berserk. <laughs> Josh Bot. Yeah. Jo yeah, he's great. What's and, it called? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a, he's an even bigger Berserk fan than I am. Really? Yeah, he, he's uh, showcased many uh, photos of uh, oh, the particular figure. But the number one Berserk collector I ever met is Mike Kochis, who was uh, one of the head guys at Think Geek and who has recently gone on to work for Bethesda. Bethesda. That's sweet. Skyrim. That's a big okay. uh, that's a big jump. Yeah, so hopefully he can make Bethesda add a berserk downloadable content to oh, Skyrim. Man. That would That'd be amazing. Be sweet. So Justin was talking about the details and Heather. Uh, she kind of scares me because she looks kind of drugged up. I mean, that's just part of the, the game. I think she's aesthetic. scared. Yeah, she's yeah. scared. But the one thing... I didn't notice this in the box. I'm going to be she completely did, honest. She looks gorgeous. I would date her mm -hmm. if... Uh, I'm assuming she's 18 okay. or over. Oh, yeah. possibly. Yeah, she is. I mean, take your pick now, For but... Sure. Uh, this guy right here, I didn't notice it in the box right away, but anything that's blue is actually flocked, just like a mascot. And yeah, it's yeah. really, it has, it's a great detail. It's very fuzzy. Yeah. Very cuddly. Yeah. 
So uh, you don't want to take this home with you? No, I would rather take her home. I think I agree. I She's I'm actually gonna I'm pretty. gonna keep this one. I'm gonna take it with me, and that it'll be the first statue that's on display. Awesome. And uh, I will scare kids with it. You don't want to take this one? She's beautiful. Well, we're we just broke up actually. Oh okay. Uh, we were dating two seconds ago, and then. That's her, the speed of the internet. And her hand fell off. So you guys in the comments, let us know what do you think about Silent Hill, Silent Hill Three, Silent Hill series, the movies, and what do you think about Gecko and their collectibles? Wait, is that? Did you really hold that? Yeah, he gets a chainsaw. No yeah. way. Yeah. I thought that was for her. No, no. Oh, he's a little bit cooler now. Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> oh yes. He's very cool. So yeah, let us know about what do you think about these uh, statues from Gecko, and we also have Neca's, you know, Nintendo well, Batman. What I like is uh, all those stands. No, they come off. Well, that one, yeah. at least, definitely comes off, and he doesn't even need the stand. You can swap them out if you want to. Oh, no, you no, can't. No, you can't, because their poses them. are different. Oh, yeah, but true. if you don't want the stand, you can just stand up by itself. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this statue. I don't know because... if this one is supposed to do that, because it's pretty stable, but that one definitely does. Yeah. Look at that. It's spooky. Really, really cool. And it's actually pretty heavy, too. Yeah. Look, it's, uh, like I said, it's... So good, it might actually be the tipping point for me to get into statues. Yeah. Or it actually might be haunted. Could be There's haunted. a couple really nice Nintendo statues that are like 500 bucks, though. I don't know. How much do these things cost? You have a Ganondorf, don't you? No. Oh, you don't have that one? Oh, that small one? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. It's a small uh, statue that came with the Wii U uh, version of Wind Waker. Yeah. It was like a limited edition one. It was it was free, like, basically, because I paid like five, ten, ten more dollars for it, basically. But, no, there's the really, really nice Ganondorf statue that's at Nintendo World. Yeah. It's like $300, where he's like holding the That's the one I was talking about, yeah. The first for figures I one. I definitely don't have yeah. that. What is it? First for figures? Is yeah. The is, that, is that official? Like it's official. Nintendo? They're a UK company, yeah. Because they did, um, they did a Tanuki Mario, mm -hmm. and they they're doing a Link now uh, on a Loft Wing from Skyward Sword. But they're like really expensive, like five hundred dollars. Yeah. I know sometimes the statues are more expensive than the action figures. So you know, commenters, viewers, let us know. Do you collect statues? What statues should we get into? I know Tamashi Nations. They do a bunch of like Sailor Moon statues. Yeah, the Zero Line. The Zero Line. Have, yeah. yeah. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, cool. Uh, why don't we uh, hear from the fans? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's jump to fan question. We actually have five questions today. I haven't read any of them beforehand, so this would be interesting. <laughs> all right, no number one comes from underscore Professor Taco underscore. What was your all time favorite video game ending so far? Question mark, question mark. Favorite video game ending, we mildly talked about this. Uh -huh. I mean, just. Oh, okay. Ending. Ending. Sorry. Okay. No, I'm think sorry. about it. Think about it, because I have one going right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I played through a lot of video games, but recently, what you know latched onto me, I just finished without spoiling anything. Uh, a Link Between Worlds for the Nintendo 3DS. I thought that had an excellent ending. Uh, when you beat that game, it's like you know very fulfilling. It just says the princess is in another castle. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very fulfilling. No, there was something revealed, and you're just kind of like, oh no way! And it definitely has one of those moments. So. Check out A Link Between Worlds for the Nintendo 3DS. Figma's making a Figma. I, I think I sold my copy. <laughs> oh my god. What the heck? Oh yeah, I mean, people were talking about it earlier and, you know, commenting away. Uh, at New York Comic Con, you're looking at footage right now. Uh, mm -hmm. when we saw Toon Link on display, there was a little message and announcement that coming they're soon. coming soon. Figma, not Nendoroid, Figma is going to be making A Link from A Link Between Worlds. Yeah. Uh, cool. Jesse, have you ever beaten a game? Or? I did not beat it. Um, <laughs> I, I did not beat it. On, on <laughs> principle, whenever I get to an ice palace, I always quit a game. No, just in general, like, what's your favorite ending to a game? I was saying, have you ever beaten Mine's a game? Um, Mine's I think cool. that's a question coming up, though. What's the first game we beat? Oh, okay, so... Well, we'll but, can, but can you answer this question? That's have I asking. ever beaten one? Uh, yeah, with Game Genie. <laughs> so, no, do you have a favorite video game ending? Yes. Okay. And it's very appropriate to this episode because I would say Bioshock Infinite. There you go. Okay. There's a huge, there are layers and layers of reveals to that game that really uh, show you the writing was put first. And uh, the ending to this one is, uh, it's it's uh, abstract, it's cinematic, it really like explains the entire lineage of all the Bioshock games. It's it's amazing. It's And it beats most movies. Mm. Um, and the inscription on his hand has a little bit of something to do with that. That's cool. So I Spoiler. would definitely say Bioshock Infinite, best ending ever. You ever beat Solitaire and then all the cards, you know, jump at the screen? That's I never beat ending. Solitaire, I quit. That was uh. actually my answer. So moving on to number two, uh, Bryant Scott. Uh, what Don you think is the hardest boss battle in a video game? Jeez. Oh, these are all video game themed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, boss battle. Hardest boss battle? Boss Ooh. battle, but you always talk about Mega Man. Just the boss rush? Yeah, well, yeah, just Mega Man in general, how oh, you have to Mega fight Man. every boss at the end. It's Mega like, Man Zero, too. Yeah. That's 
not two, but as well. Yeah. Th those games are really hard. I guess yes. I remember uh, Contra Hardcore, um, you know, Corpse, mm -hmm. Core. Mm -hmm. uh, those bosses were exceptionally hard, but I love that game, and I would play it just over and over again. But, yeah, those were... Definitely very challenging. I'd say Super Shredder from Turtles in Time is a pain. Oh yeah, yeah, that that's totally good. Good choice. Um, I, I couldn't. I was gonna say Borderlands, but I actually had some ease. If you play it by yourself, then yeah, like uh, in Borderlands One, the boss is pretty uh bad. The thing that comes through the uh, you know. You know, but I don't yeah, want to spoil I anything. I, uh, uh, I guess you're showing a picture on screen right now of whatever <laughs> the hell Nikki's talking a about. A couple pictures. Actually, oh. you're seeing about four or five different pictures right now. Uh, slowly, and then there's some crossfit. Warpstar Music asks, when Super Smash Bros. Wii U comes out, will Toy Pizza challenge us? Yes. First of all, Warpstar, I'm glad that you guys follow us. You guys are awesome. Check it out. Warpstar, they have done a Bravest Warriors song uh, mm -hmm. for the Bravest Warriors soundtrack. They were on a 24-hour live stream for Cartoon Hangover. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's play. Let's, let's play Smash. Play. And okay. Both of you are getting Wii U's for the game, or we might share. Is that a type of deodorant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. Wii U pH balance. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's um, Arctic Breeze flavor. Perfect. Uh, the period majestic period space period duck asked, "What was the first video game you ever played?" Um, the very first video game I ever played was probably either Super Mario World for Super Nintendo. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I didn't play NES actually. Or, um, actually, that's probably what it was. Or the All Stars game that came with it. Um, but I have distinct memories of playing Link's Awakening on Game Boy. Cause that, because mine was a bundle when I got my Game Boy. But, um, I, it would have been an arcade game, and I want to okay. say the okay. only one I have a really distinct memory of was, um, Virtual Fighter. No, the Tron oh. video game. But I, the first home video game I played was, would have been Classic Mario Brothers. For mm. sure. I was going to say that, too. I have a distinct memory of my dad teaching me how to set up the Nintendo, and I was like, wow, like, I am so technical. I know how to uh, screw the cable thing in the back yeah, of the TV. Yeah, you felt like MacGyver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had to say that, but if it wasn't that, it'd be those, like, t handheld tiger games. Oh, yeah. Those, you know? Yeah. Those, those don't those count. count. Okay. That's a yeah, watch battery. Duck Hunt That's and Mario Brothers. Duck Hunt, yeah. And you're right on the screen with the zapper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the gun is like touching the, the that tube. That damn dog still taunts me to this day. <laughs> well, you can beat him up in uh, Smash. That's true. Okay. Did you sell your copy? I uh, <laughs> I did download Smash. I played it once, and I have not touched it since. You should have bought the physical kind, then that way you could sell it. Yeah. Um, last question comes in from our good pal, Curry Lord. Uh, what is your number one game you replay every year or so? Uh, That's good. Mega That's Man good. X. That's an easy answer for me. Uh, I don't know that I replay any game every year but i will say right now i'm obsessed with and i have always played all of the most of the iterations of is metal slug okay oh, yeah, metal yeah. slug is fantastic there is yeah. a awesome free app that is not the traditional game they've sort of found a way to do tower defense with metal slug sprites oh. and it's got all the sound effects and the mission start and it's oh, wow. perfect is it legal it's totally legal it's okay. put out by snk play more oh, wow and it really has taken what you love about Metal Slug, the, the beautiful sprites yes. and the animation, mm -hmm. and it's crammed it into a mobile game. You don't have to be online to play it, which is great, mm -hmm. you know, going on the subways and everything. Right. Um, so I would say that's like a, a really good, I can always go back to and have a great experience with. Just Metal, Metal Slug, Slug, not that specific game. Yeah. But that one, <laughs> that one's right it. now, is in my mind. <laughs> really uh, quick, uh, when I think about Metal Slug, uh, when I was in middle school, we had teen night, you know, Friday night, come hang out at the school, be safe and stuff. And they had Metal Slug arcade cabinet. Whoa. And I was like, oh, like, I'm not going to hang out with you guys. I don't want to play Metal Slug. Sure. Right. So I did that. But if I had to pick a game, just time and time again, it's like, I don't know what to play. I don't want to play new games. I don't want to progress the story. I was going to beat it one of the beat many times. Borderlands 1 has yeah. a great replay value for me. For sure. Resident Evil 4. That's yeah. great replay value for me. Mm -hmm. And on uh, PlayStation, Crash Bandicoot 2 and Brave Silent Fencer. Silent Hill 3. Silent Hill 3. Silent Hill 3, specifically. Uh, was for PS2. And also Brave Fencer Musashi. I don't... What? It's a, it was a... Uh, Gazuntite. You have to pick know. one. <laughs> you, <laughs> pick, you can't pick five. Yeah, it's like every year, every year I swap between oh these uh You gotta go games. with Borderlands then. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna say Borderlands. Please so, <laughs> all you viewers out there, like everyone else who asks us questions, you can always ask us questions by emailing us at toypizzamill at gmail.com. Leave us a comment. Check our Instagram where we actually post specific Q&As. And, you know, let us know your answers to these questions as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. And let us know who won, uh, Booker or Batman. That's right. And uh, let, tell us a brief description about Silent Hill 3, because we don't really want to look it up. We haven't played it. Uh, we're interested. I play the game um, all the time. And let us know 
who out of the three of us has the nicest blazer, and are double-breasted blazers coming back in this season? I, I don't think so. I think you win hey, with it's the for nicest. them. I know. I've never worn a blazer on the show. No, well, that's weird. You should wear it on the show. I know. You win. <laughs> I win. You definitely win, but I don't. I don't think the double-breasted is coming back. Well, my mom would disagree. I don't like the look of you, Batman. Pizza out. Pizza out. Uh, I'll <laughs> open it up. You do Booker versus Batman. Welcome to Toy Pizza. Today, more video game toys. Yeah, we got. <laughs> All right.